Donald Trump making a pretty astounding claim tonight in a Fox town hall. This, well, you just have to hear for yourself. Navalny is a very sad situation, and he's br very brave. He was a very brave guy because he went back. He could have stayed away. And frankly, probably would have been a lot better off staying away and talking from outside of the country as opposed to having to go back in. And it's a horrible thing. But it's happening in our country, too. Uh, we are turning into a communist country in many ways. And if you look at it, I'm the leading candidate. I got indicted. I never heard of being indicted before. I was going I got indicted four times. I have eight or nine trials, all because of the fact that I'm, and you know this, all because of the fact that I'm in politics. A is a of form of Navalny. It is a form of uh, communism or fascism. That's right. Donald Trump is comparing his $355 million fine for fraudulently inflating the value of his properties to a political prisoner who stood up to a dictator, was poisoned, thrown in a penal colony, and has since died under mysterious circumstances. President Biden responding tonight, saying that Vladimir Putin is, in fact, responsible. Quote, Trump fails to even condemn him. It's outrageous. Joining me now, former Congressman Joe Walsh and political commentator Maria Cardona. Let's just start right here, because the idea that you have a former president, forget a leading candidate, a former president, mm -hmm. suggesting somehow that we are turning into a communist country, it's mind-boggling. It's astounding, Laura, and it is something that should, you know, it, we say this too often that it's kind of lost meaning, but we should be very concerned, very scared about the smidgen of possibility, perhaps even more of a smidgen, that this man can enter the Oval Office again. Because everything that he's talking about, everything that he's saying, are full-on lies, but his supporters believe him. They not only believe him, they eat it up, and every single time that he is in court, it helps his support among those who are following him, you know, off the cliff, frankly. What it doesn't do, though, is it doesn't help him in the general election. Mm -hmm. And this, I think, is going to be something that he's going to find out here pretty quickly. When he wraps up the nomination, which he's about to do, he's going to run into the general election, which is where all of these convictions, everything that he's saying about or, or not saying about Navalny and Vladimir Putin, not being able to condemn Vladimir Putin for the murder of his political opponent. In fact, I kind of think that he admires him for that. Uh, the, all of that is going to really affect him among independents, among former Republicans, among people who he needs if he's going to have it, a chance it, of winning. It, 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 Laura, it's ugly. Yeah. And it's it, we don't say this enough about Trump. God, he pisses me off. This is anti-American. Mm -hmm. This isn't the first time he said this. He, he's always saying crap like this, like, this happens here, and we kill people here, and we're bad here, yeah. and we've got bad guys here. This is ugly, blame America, anti-American BS, and I wish Biden and the... Uh, look, my, my former colleagues aren't going to call this out, uh, but I, I hope the Democrats jump on this, because this is anti-American crap that needs to be called out. I mean, he's suggesting that his legal troubles are a kind of Navalny. I guess he's trying to use that phrase to suggest, I don't know what. But the idea that his legal troubles, based on allegations, mm -hmm. some of which include grand jury indictments, yeah are somehow analogous to what has happened to Navalny, who, by the way, we still don't know the full circumstances of his death. But on that point, there is some exclusive reporting tonight that CNN has that Biden is actually directing some of his senior aides, Maria, mm -hmm. to focus more aggressively Good. on Trump um, and the inflammatory comments yeah. because they might maybe have forgotten wanting him to, yes. um, to make sure they know all that he is saying. Is that the right strategy? I absolutely think it's the right strategy, and I'm glad that they're doing it. I hope that he leans, leans full on 180,000% into it because we are, I think, at a point where... All of the energy and the mobilization right now is in the, on the Republican side because they're the ones who are having this crazy primary. Uh, but I do think that we have to remind people what Trump did in his first four years and what he has not been shy in saying he would do if he gets another four years, if he gets another chance at the White House. And 
you know, voters are focused on their own lives. And there is this kind of, you know, voter, not, not necessarily apathy, but sort of forgetfulness of what it was that Trump did, what he said every single day, the chaos, the crazy, the confusion, the criminality, the cruelty that he brought That's and will thing. continue That's to thing, bring. Laura. He says Trump's magic is he says 179 cruel, ugly, intolerant, anti-American things a day. And so our eyes just glaze over. And America, the American people need to be reminded about it constantly. But I do wonder, the polling suggests that, assuming they don't have amnesia, mm -hmm. that's who his base wants. Oh, absolutely. They know who he is and they embrace it. So is there some level of patronizing that's going on to suggest, well, if I just remind you who he is, maybe then you wouldn't support him? They know who he is and they support him. Most of them do. I'm talking about the great swath of people in the yeah, middle. And by right. the way, the president, the current president has an issue. A lot of voters have a problem and consider him unacceptable because of his age. He's got to deal with that. But now you've got all these undecided voters who do know that Trump's unacceptable. They worry that Biden's unacceptable. Biden needs to remind them mm -hmm. of why he's unacceptable. And that's exactly what this campaign, the general election campaign that we were just talking about earlier, is going to be all about. It's going to be about this contrast between Joe Biden, a man who is there, he gets another four years, he wants to continue to boost the economy for everyone, protect our rights and freedoms, protect our democracy, and Donald Trump, who is a fraudster, a sex offender, a would wannabe dictator, and is in it all for himself. I want to hear Biden say, I'm tired of Donald Trump bad-mouthing America. Mm -hmm. I, I want to hear that mm. constantly. Well, we'll see if he starts <laughs> to say it. You've I heard it from Joe Walsh. There you go. Joe, <laughs> Rhea, thank Joe you Joe. so much.